Dr. Adam Rogers is the CEO of NerveGen. He is a board-certified medical doctor from Emory College and Emory School of Medicine. He's here with me now um, to talk about a fascinating new development here. If you have ever known or loved someone who suffers a spinal cord injury, you know how quickly life can change and the uphill battle um, that it can sometimes be between will, access, health care, and insurance to regain some semblance of normalcy in their lives. Um, so, doctor, thank you so much for your time. Um, as I understand it, there's an experimental drug that could help to improve that process where movement is concerned. That is correct. That is correct. Before we get into that, Anita, and, and you hit on it a little bit, let me let me just talk to you and, and your audience about the size and scope of spinal cord injury. Mm -hmm. Because, I, you know, everyone hears about it. People occasionally, you'll know someone with it. But there are over 300,000 individuals in the United States alone with spinal cord injury and about 18 to 19,000 new cases per year. So it's an enormous problem. Um, there are no pharmacologic treatments or what I would call drugs that, that individuals can take that will improve function. There is some stimulation, electrical stimulation that is approved by the Food and Drug Administration for this issue. But other than that, there is no nothing really available that's going to help individuals improve movement. And at NerveGen, we're a company that has developed a drug that we call NVG-291. It's a very simple injection in the abdomen. It's given once daily, where uh, we give it for 12 weeks. It was tested recently in a phase 1B2A clinical study that was approved. The study was approved by the Food and Drug Administration. It was administered um, at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab in Chicago. And we had 10 individuals that were treated with the drug and 10 individuals that did not receive the drug as a control arm. Uh, the study went on for 12 weeks, and then we watched the individual patients for another four weeks after that. They also received um, outstanding physical therapy and occupational therapy, exercise treatment at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab as well. And what the study showed was that uh, with these individuals, and these are individuals with cervical spinal cord injuries, and cervical spinal cord is really, if you reach back behind your neck, mm -hmm. that's the portion of your spinal cord that's the, the cervical area. And from cervical C7 higher, those are individuals that we were, um, that were allowed to enroll in the study. They needed to be motor incomplete, which means they had some firing of neurons from their brain to their hand, to their legs. So they, were, they had some movement, but very limited hand and leg movement. So th these are these are individuals that are that are, you know, very um, affected by their their injury. What we saw was that there was a doubling of improvement in upper arm function and then in hand function, which is vital to individuals with spinal cord injury. If you ask an individual with a spinal cord injury that's in a wheelchair, what is the most important what is what would you gain back that's the most important? Mm -hmm. It's hand function, mm -hmm. really over even walking, which wow. is which is most people out there wouldn't expect that. But if you think about it, what do you do with your hands? You know, it's your ability to use a mouse, to type on a keyboard, to transfer yourself from a chair, your wheelchair to a regular chair, to pick up a fork or a knife so that you can eat independently, even to hold your phone. And so hand function is vitally important for these individuals. And when we were testing hand function over the 12 week period, we had a 9.3 X improvement in hand function against individuals that were getting exercise alone. And so I, I find that the results are really remarkable. And this is one of the first drugs, not the only drug that's shown improvement in you know, functional improvement in individuals with a very severe spinal cord injury. Yeah, and that hand movement was in what period of time? Over 12 weeks. So they received the drug for daily for 12 weeks, and it's a shot in the abdomen um, around their belly button or the umbilicus. And so it's very simple to administer. Either the individual or a caregiver was able to, able to give it to them. So it's really quite simple. It's a, it's a simple, well-accepted administration. And is this preferred, the, the injection that you were talking about, is that preferred over daily pills? Well, there is no daily pill, and this is the best way to administer the drug so that it's able to um, 
impact the central nervous system. Okay. All right. Um, so tell me where you move from here. Like what you're, you're going to phase two, what, what does that entail? And, and what can people expect from here? Well, we're going to actually, Anita, we're going to actually move into a phase three study. So this, this study, and let me backtrack just a minute. And, and just so you understand the impact of this drug, we took individuals that were one to 10 years out from their spinal cord injury. These are not people that I just had a spinal cord injury within five days. I mean, so to be mm -hmm, 10 mm -hmm. years out from a spinal cord injury, and I think the average duration uh, from the injury to the start of treatment was a little over four years. It's really amazing that we're able to see functional improvement in these individuals. So our next step would be a phase three study. It would be a larger study. It would be at more than just one site. The first site was obviously here in Chicago at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. We would do this in up to 60 sites around the country just for ease of access for individuals to gain access into the study itself. Yeah, and, and tell me like before this development, what is it maybe taking the place of? What would be the, the course of action, um, whether it's like cell therapies or, or what's the course of action that this may speed up or altogether replace? Well, the only, the other than some spinal stimulation that's, that there's a device called the ARC-X that's for upper limb function, other than physical therapy and occupational therapy, there is really nothing for individuals with spinal cord injury. Um, we often discuss the spinal cord injury community. We might say it's an underserved community, we actually looked at, at it as an unserved community. Mm. There just are very, very few treatments for individuals to improve function uh, at this point in time. I, I have a lot of hope that this drug, if it continues to show the improvement that it's shown here at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab in the first uh, 20 pay individuals that we enrolled, I'm very, very confident that, that this will dramatically impact the lives of individuals that have spinal cord injury. I think it's going to be, it's going to provide an enormous hope and transform the lives of individuals. That's why I'm involved in the company. It's why I'm pushing so hard to continue to move this drug forward into additional clinical trials uh, and in, in meetings with regulatory agencies. Yeah, what is it going to take? I mean, when you talk about meetings with regulatory agencies, um, funding cuts, do, do those affect what you're doing right now? Not necessarily. This is, this is a study that, that we will fund. Um, this is a study that it will go on. And as far as regulatory agencies, it's just being on the same page with them so that um, NerveGen and the Food and Drug Administration uh, have an understanding of what needs to be accomplished and how we need to get there. It, it, it's really just having a relationship with the organization mm -hmm. itself. I'd, I'd love to know, maybe even you could give me one or two stories of what people's lives were like before they even came in contact with you. W what was the incident that put them in a situation where they needed your help? Well, there's an individual here. Um, there's an individual here in Chicago that was treated the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. He was going into college. Uh, he had a very unfortunate accident where he uh, dove off a dock and suffered a cervical spinal cord injury. Obviously, he was over a year out from the injury, which qualified him for our study, and he received uh, treatment from the drug. I'm not quite sure how far out he is now from, from the treatment itself, but this drug has improved his hand function. It has enabled him to start college. He's at the University wow. of Illinois. He lives alone. He does have a, he does have some help in the mornings and in the evenings, but he lives alone and is able to attend uh, classes. So it's this this drug has enabled him to improve his function, where he is now independently going to school and continue to live his life uh, onward. And that's really that's really what we're looking for in this company: is how do we transform your life so that you have more independent living? And that's. That's the phenomenal part of this uh, of this journey that we're on here at NerveGen. It really is. Okay, so would a person have to continue to get those shots for the rest of their lives, or, or how long is this overall process? That's a, that's a really, really good question. For right now, we're focused on a 12-week course. Uh, I feel 
We in the company feel that that's what's needed to get uh, regulatory approval. It very well may, may be that down the road that an additional 12 week course is needed. But at, at, at this point in time, we're, we're moving forward with 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Are there some other things? I mean, you talk about um, a non-served community or underserved community. Are there some other things on the horizon that you know of that could also be game changers for this community? I wouldn't be surprised down the road if there is a combination of NVG 291 with some form of stimulation to, to help individuals. It's such a catastrophic injury. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that a multimodal approach is, is in, for many of the individuals, is going to be the answer. It may not be for everybody, yeah. but there's a possibility. But that, that's time and testing. And, and you know, you asked about hurdles. It's, it's, you know, drug development is a time consuming and expensive process, and mm -hmm. it, we all just need to be patient. Uh, I'm not a person with a lot of patience, but we unfortunately need to have patience in this situation. Yeah, I don't think most of us have that much patience in this no. day and time. <laughs> but, but, you know, for someone who is in this situation, or even a loved one, you know, their family members, when they hear of something that offers hope, uh, I, I would imagine that that ability to have patience through it is extremely difficult. I mean, we're speaking from the outside, but for someone on the inside, and you, you hear something that has hope, you want to hold on to that. You, you want to feel like this, this might be the answer. Um, what, what is your conversation like with people about the possibilities here and um, the likelihood of, of you know, things kind of going up and down? Well, you know, I, had an, uh, I have conversations multiple times a week with individuals who are have had spinal cord injuries are in rehabilitation facilities right now um, i understand i understand very well and, and i was a practicing physician for almost 20 years mm -hmm. i understand where they are and and what they want you know my goal here is to bring a drug to market that's going to improve their lives and transform it i listen to them we get connected. I let them know where, where we are going as a company, just like I'm discussing with you today. And, you know, we, we have those discussions. But it, a lot of it is just informing people about what's out there, what the future holds, and, and how they can um, help themselves along, along the way. Okay. And when do you think you could have this to market? Well, we, we anticipate that we're going to be starting the phase three study um, in the middle of 2026. Mm -hmm. um, no, no outlook for when you hope it's all packaged up and we ready. We anticipate about twenty-four years after the twenty-four months. I'm sorry, after the first patient enrolls. Okay, okay, all right. Anything else that you think people should know, or if maybe someone's listening and they're like, maybe this could be the answer for me. What do they need to do? Well, there is an active, ongoing study at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab right now, which is enrolling individuals up to 90 days after a cervical spinal cord injury and they have to be motor incomplete. And so if, if you're in that situation or you have a loved one who's in that situation you're watching, I would recommend contacting the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab and discussing with them the possibility of enrolling in the trial. So it's, it's a second arm of our trial that's looking at individuals with a subacute injury.